Okay, for this video, I wanted to cover some very common 1040 filing issues I'm seeing for this year's tax season. So what we're talking about here is the 2021 Form 1040. So if you're looking at your 1040, you'll see tax year 2021. And these are being filed during 2022, right? So the 2022 season. Um, so a lot of these issues do happen kind of on a year to year basis. But this year we're seeing um, some particularly new challenges related to a lot of things that are kind of um, as a result of the, the pandemic that we just kind of went through. So the first one, and this applies across the board, is uh, paper filing your tax return. So <clears throat> I, I can't stress this enough, please try to avoid paper filing at all costs. Uh, paper filing returns is generally more inaccurate uh, than electronically filing because if you're, if you're hand preparing the forms, you're having to do a lot of calculations and math yourself versus where if you use computer software to e-file, a lot of the math is kind of done for you. So it helps um, kind of avoid some of those issues. The other issue that we're seeing is purely just with processing time. If you paper file a return, it's going to take you months to get the IRS to even open that mail and log it into the system. Uh, a lot of taxpayers that paper filed returns in 2020 still have not had their paper filed returns processed. So if you paper file your 1040 now in March 2022, you should expect to wait a year, if I'm being honest. You're going to be waiting a year to get any kind of um, you know, notification from the IRS that the return was processed and your refund, if you're getting one, is issued. Uh, the second big issue we're seeing with this year is related to the, the stimulus check. So the IRS, well, the federal government rather, issued three stimulus payments. So one, two, and three. The third one which was starting to be issued in January 2021 was for $1,400 per person uh, and that included $1,400 for every dependent. Now for taxpayers that did not get that $1,400 check, the procedures this year require that you um, claimed that $1,400 on your 1040, right? So there's a line item for the recovery rebate credit and you claim it there and you get the check. The problem we're seeing is a lot of taxpayers that are preparing their own returns are using tax prep software that has very poorly worded questions, right? So the, the, the questions are um, basically driving people in this direction where they're answering yes, that they did not get the stimulus payment and then it's recording it on the return where the IRS thinks or the taxpayer already did get their $1,400 stimulus check. And so what that does is it, it delays the return because the IRS is seeing that you already got the payment, yet you're claiming it again. So returns are being adjusted downward for amounts that the IRS already thinks they issued you. The third big one that we are seeing is this advanced child tax credit feature. So uh, for the 2021 tax year, the child tax credit was uh, $3,000 per dependent, right, qualifying child um, for children that were six or over, and then $3,600 uh, if under. Now, the advanced feature, which was unique to this year, said that, okay, well, if you're going to get, let's say, $3,000 at the end of the year, we'll start giving you monthly payments in July 2021, and you'll get those through December as part of the advanced credit. The logic being, let's get money in your bank account now rather than you having to wait until March or April 2022 to get your money. The problem with this is people are forgetting to record the advance payments on their tax return. So if you pull up your 1040, look at form 8812, uh, that's where you calculate your child tax credit. And specifically on 8812, if we're looking at part uh, 1B line 14F, that is where you are supposed to report the amount of payments you already got. Okay, if you didn't get any advance payments because you opted out of the advance feature, then that's fine. That, that line item can be blank and you'll get the full 3,000 per child or 3,600 per child, whatever the child's age is. But if you already received advance payments 
and you're not recording them, you're effectively overstating your tax refund. And if you're overstating your tax refund, when the IRS system shows you got advance payments, they are going to put a hold on your return. They're going to adjust your refund down. And it, it's, it, it's an unpleasant supply, a surprise for a lot of taxpayers because they think they're getting a much larger refund than they're actually due. The fourth big issue is just a pure e-filing issue and, and the backlog of the paper file returns. So if you want to e-file for 2021, there's an AGI verification. This is not uncommon, where you have to enter your prior year AGI, and that's how the IRS knows it's you filing your return. The issue is if you filed your 2020 return and it has not yet been processed, your AGI is showing a zero in the system. So there's an e-file validation error. Now the workaround is just to put in zero as your AGI, even though you know that that's not the case. That appears to be kind of working for the time being. But again, this is a big problem we're seeing. Um, and a lot of taxpayers are not, not rushing to judgment, but they're not aware of this workaround. So now because the e-file is rejected, they're printing out the return, they're mailing it, which just creates the same problem they had before. Now they're paper filing a return when they can e-file and they're looking at another year before the IRS opens that thing and actually processes it. So it's just, it's just compounding the problem that a lot of people already have. The uh, fifth big one is an e-filing rejection for the 1095As. So if you have uh, health insurance through the marketplace and your premiums are lower because you're getting that advanced premium tax credit, uh, which you are entitled to have, if you, if you get this 1095A, you have the advanced credit uh, feature, you need to include a form 8962 to reconcile how much of the credit you should have actually got. Meaning, th if your income goes up from what you initially uh, claimed when you applied for the insurance, uh, then you might have to repay some of the credit, okay? Uh, in order for the IRS to know whether or not you have to repay any or not, you have to complete the 8962. Um, and so what we're seeing this year is returns are being rejected because the IRS knows you have a 1095A, but they don't see the 8962 on your tax return, so they're just kicking it back to you. Uh, the, sec the, the sixth big issue and this applies every year, uh, just flat out not reporting all your income. So if you have 1099s uh, that were submitted by third parties to the IRS and then they give you a copy, you've got to be reporting this income. If you don't report the income, uh, the IRS system, there is a matching process here. They will look at what's on the return versus what was submitted by third parties. And if there's a discrepancy, they basically impute the income or, or kind of adjust the return for you automatically compute the tax and then they send you a bill for the extra tax owed or they'll just take it out of your refund okay so make sure you're reporting everything and then last but not least our um, <clears throat> incorrect social security numbers so this happens every year too if you're uh, claiming a dependency exem exemption child tax credits the social security number has got to match right so legal name correct social security number have to match or else you will absolutely get a return uh, rejection once you e-file. Um, and then uh, the other issue is claiming uh, dependents that were already claimed on another tax return or they already filed a tax return and they didn't indicate that they could be claimed by somebody else on another filing. Right, so a lot of this happens with um, uh, ex so divorced parents or just parents that are separated um, when one parent kind of rushes to claim the, chil the, the children and so they, lo they file their return, they lock in that dependency claim and then the, the other partner, uh, the other parent tries to subsequently file and claim the same child, that's going to create a, re uh, a return rejection. So, um, uh, so I hope that was helpful. I mean, these are things to look out for before, you know, I ideally you should Beware of this list before you file, but I can understand a lot of people have already filed, they got rejections, and they're just trying to figure out what happened. You might have one of these issues, right? You might have an issue one through seven, which is why the IRS kicked your return back to you. Okay, so uh, that covers it for this video. I hope that was helpful. If you have any other questions, leave me a comment below, um, and uh, happy to answer any questions I can. All right, thanks so much. See you again on the next video.